The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 630 We're all monsters. Well, Crystal sniffed, racked with shudders as she hugged her belly, I would make you all fugitives from the world. Still think I'm worth the trouble? Valet couldn't stop her ears from falling, memories of the tunnels and gyre rising in her mind. Was that the place she would go to? Were her emotions right now the same kind of desperate venom Stanza was made from? A rage against injustice and a desire to own her own future and feelings? Some of Garshiva's heresies banned things that were clearly bad, but the prohibition against cross-species relationships had always seemed arbitrary and dumb. Bananas! I feel for that, she murmured. You know, there's a unicorn I'd probably be a lot closer to if not for that rule myself. <sighs> Crystal lifted her neck, fur stained with tears. Of course you care. Ponies are bad at knowing when not to care. But he didn't answer the question. I... Valley swallowed and realized she couldn't answer. Was Crystal worth the trouble? Was a damaged, angry mare who wanted to live in peace with her lover and child worth fighting a world that didn't want to let them? Somehow, Valet and her friends had poked their noses into Isvaldi without having another Einrich. They had learned things, yet stayed free. Letting an obvious heretic onto their ship when she had just seen the painful extent of such a crime's punishment? Then the whole world really would be against them. Not just a city where everyone was hostile, but an entire continent. Valet gritted her teeth. What would Maple say? Shinespark? Starlight? Maple would say yes, Crystal was worth the trouble. Maple would also see another mother-to-be and become emotionally conflicted and invested, but she wouldn't be able to leave Crystal alone. Shinespark? She would play the long game, want to change an unjust society while tending individually to its casualties. At least the old Shinespark of Sosa would, but Crystal didn't have a long time. She had two months, and Starlight? Eh, she didn't know. Maybe Starlight would just suggest Crystal leave. Okay, Valet breathed, making up her mind. Maybe, maybe you living on our airship isn't the best idea ever, but I still want to help. I've got like a month of downtime or whatever while they set up for the next round of the tournament. You're good for at least a month, right? Before you give birth? Crystal eyed her hourly. I just said how long I have. Yeah, yeah, you did. Valet scratched the back of her head. Give me a minute to think of another idea here. Valet's brain spun in circles, looking for any way Crystal could be held that would fit within the span of two months. She needed shelter from the Empire, not mere living arrangements, and the Immortal Dream wasn't equipped to provide that. Going to Mistvale wasn't an option. As little as she knew about the place, the Night Mother had heresies too, and interspecies relationships were also one of hers. Could she leave the continent entirely? Air travel to Iron Ridge wasn't in supply, and it was a month-long voyage, so they couldn't take her there and make it back in time to not miss the tournament. And now that Wallace and his friends were in her corner... Every time she tried to pull a thread and think beyond that circle, though, she ran into a familiar problem. Crystal was in the room, and a very convenient part of her brain wanted to get distracted thinking about Crystal instead. Your gaze is easy to follow, Crystal warned. Whatever good time you're worth won't give me a future, and I'm already taken. Think of a better idea. Uh, hey! Valet's ears flicked back, her cheeks threatening. Look, I'm trying my best to take things seriously here, and that takes a little effort because I don't let loose much. Heresy laws. You know how it is, so if you don't want this conversation to be about that, don't bring it up. You assume I want this conversation to be about anything, Crystal muttered. You don't need to be here. Lily folded her wings and huffed. Yeah, but guess what? I am, and the more this gets off topic, the longer I'm gonna stay. Go ahead and try it. You can't steam me up and embarrass me into leaving like last time. And if you try, I'm gonna hug you again, so lay off. Crystal shrugged, then rolled, moving in her bed so that her belly was right in front of Valet. Go right ahead. Valet frowned. Bleh? Indulge yourself, Crystal requested, stretched out and presenting her womb. I make an effort to keep my body lovable, but my soul? You don't love me. You pity me, and pity is a poor substitute for love. You want something from me, whether validation or some other desire. 
pity objectifies. It lets you see me as whatever I need to be for what you have to offer to help most. Go on, feel my child, sing to them, tell them they're precious, but you want to help their mother and make a future for them. If you're going to pad out your deluded reality, don't let me stop you from going all the way. Whoa, hold on! Valene narrowed her eyes, crawling backwards and getting off the bed. What's deluded about me trying to help? Didn't I just tell you what I was in this for? What do you even think I want? She stomped a hoof. Bananas, yeah, I do pity you. And to be honest, your personality is gross. It is not attractive, and I honestly feel terrible for whoever your true love is. And it's really awkward when you've got nice legs and that half-button made thingy that looks like it's about to fall off and belongs at a tease model in a certain type of fashion catalog, but you look completely the opposite on the inside. And you know what? I still want to help you because I think that is worth changing. I'm not interested in pretend validation, but I am starting to lose my patience again and will slap you if you try to fake flirt with me one more time. Now, what's so deluded about my reality? Crystal sat up, hissing like she had been stung and crossing her wings defensively in front of her belly. Her long, dull aqua mane swished against the bed with emotion, and for a moment, she looked like she would attack. After a few harsh breaths, she calmed enough to say, You've already convinced yourself there's something you can do, and that I don't hate you. Valet raised her lip, then gave Crystal a glare. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you hate everything. Amicable conversation was nice, but so long for that. Now, why is there nothing I can do? You've just finished condemning my child to death, Crystal whispered, once again looking at herself. We had a chance? and you erased it, and you have the gall to come barging in here and offer to help. Her gaze flashed up, green eyes burning. You know nothing but your own desire to feel like the hero. Are you motivated by subconscious guilt, or are you so much of a monster you don't even notice? With a flash of green mane, Valet rushed. The two of them locked together, hitting the wall with Crystal pinned halfway up, her legs and hindquarters dangling. But Crystal didn't struggle. I am not a monster, Valet hissed. You want to see a monster? Your emotions are more toxic than Stanza. You have a lot more to worry about than getting condemned for heresy, lady. I don't think you could find an inch of love to raise your foal if you tried. More toxic than Stanza? Crystal chuckled darkly. Oh, you silly pony. I am Stanza. End of chapter 630.